Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that is in the upcoming CSCW, Computer Supported Cooperative Work Conference. And the focus of this paper is trying to understand how both creators as well as learners approach the task of learning programming by using live streams, video live streams, and contrasting that with the same thing but done with pre-recorded videos. Why do people choose to learn using live streaming? Why do creators choose to teach using live streaming? And what are the challenges that both creators as well as viewers face when using live streaming? These are the questions that this paper tries to answer. The way the authors try to do that is by performing in-depth interviews. They found 14 streamers and 12 viewers and had about hour-long interviews with all of them and then try to get some insights out of those answers. And this table has a little bit more information about the study participants. You see that they have 14 streamers and 12 viewers and their occupations range from professional programmers, which is indicated by a P over here, or hobbyist programmers, or students. Their ages range from 18 to 40. They're spread across both YouTube as well as Twitch in terms of platforms, and they have a wide variety of programming experience, ranging from beginners with just a few years of programming experience all the way to seasoned veterans that have 20 or more years of experience. All right, so let's look at the results. Why do streamers choose to teach programming using live streaming? The number one reason was somewhat of a surprise to me, and it is that producing a video in terms of recording it and editing it takes too much work. Streamers said, and I quote, that it takes forever, it was tedious, it was a nightmare, and it was really hot. So the dread of all this work that goes into producing a video is something that pushes them towards live streaming. Another associated reason is just the general comfort of doing live streaming and the persona one puts on when doing live streaming versus doing a pre-recorded video. As the streamers mentioned in many interviews, they are much more comfortable they are not afraid of making mistakes or correcting themselves when doing live streaming. I love this quote over here. One of the streamers said that when they were recording a video, they would shift to a flight attendant persona where they try to get everything polished and correct in their voiceover. On the other hand, when you're live streaming, things are much more casual and spontaneous and this overall expectation reduces the nervousness of live streamers. The other big reasons that streamers like doing live streaming is the connection they build with their community. When live streaming, you have all these opportunities for live real-time interactions with your viewers. Viewers chatting back at you, pointing out things in your content as you are live streaming, or asking questions or giving you compliments and so on. This sense of real-time feedback and real-time connection with their community was a major reason that streamers chose to live stream. Now let's look at the flip side. Why do learners or viewers choose to go to live streams to learn programming? The number one reason was that they like this over-the-shoulder learning experience. Most of the learners that come to live streams do not have a specific problem to solve or some sort of a preconceived learning objective. Rather, they just want to see where serendipity takes them and try to learn something new. On the other hand, when they go searching for pre-recorded videos and watch pre-recorded videos, they have a very specific knowledge objective or learning objective in mind. Viewers mentioned that what really attracted them to live streaming was this behind the scenes look at the thought process of the teacher. As they mentioned over here, they really liked when the live streamers shared tips and tricks or when they explained their thought process for approaching a problem. It's also very instructional to see the reality of programming 
and see the teacher's debug issues in real time as they are programming. And just as real time interaction was a big draw for streamers, it's also a big part of why learners come to live streams because of the sense of community. So that was a rundown of the reasons why both streamers as well as viewers are attracted to live streaming. The next part of this paper focuses on what challenges they face. Looking at challenges that streamers face, the number one challenge was preventing privacy leaks. And this mostly has to do with accidentally exposing private information while you are live streaming. Things like flashing email addresses or passwords or API keys on the screen. Streamers mentioned that they take a number of measures before they start streaming. They scrub their environment. They use specially constructed test environments that don't have any real personal information and so on. Another really big challenge, unfortunately, is harassment. Particularly non-male streamers mentioned that one of their biggest concerns was gender-based harassment, such as getting comments about their physical appearance. And to deal with this, one of their top feature requests was to have better ways to block and ban people when they are engaging in harassing behavior. The silver lining to this is that many of the non-male streamers mentioned that finding other streamers who share the same identity and the same challenges helped them overcome this challenge and helped them continue to live stream. Now let's look at the challenges that learners or viewers face when learning programming via live streaming. Most of these have to do with knowledge management when you are real time in a live stream versus when you go offline and try to learn at your own pace. One knowledge management challenge was, for example, to get some related materials like starting of code before the beginning of a stream. Another challenge was to be able to keep up with the stream if you have to go and look up something on the side. Another big challenge is one of just searching and finding high quality streams. Because streams start out empty, they just have a title it's very hard to find streams that are relevant to you or relevant to your background level of knowledge. The next big challenge for learners was around the modalities for real-time communication. And for live streaming, that basically means chat. The problem with chat is that it often becomes a long hodgepodge stream of many people chiming in and it's hard to get individual meaningful threads of conversation out of it. People also like to go back and watch archived streams, but archived streams are very hard to navigate, especially when there's a specific piece of information that you want to go back and look for. One of the key insights of this paper, in my opinion, is this point that the UI of these live streaming platforms is very much geared towards their original use case, which was gamers and entertainers. And now we have a new population of learners and teachers trying to use that same feature set, but for a very different purpose. So that was a quick look at a recent paper that tries to understand the benefits as well as the challenges both for creators or streamers as well as learners as they try to learn programming from live streams. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.